What is it that makes certain conflicts so intractable, so difficult to solve? For example, the problem in Northern Ireland, the problem in Bosnia, the problem in the Middle East, i.e. Israel, Palestine. Um, what makes these conflicts so difficult to eradicate? The normal response is, well, it's that person's fault. It's the, Those bad people are, are perpetuating this. We're the good people. We're defending ourselves. We're the victim. They are the perpetrator. We are the conquered. They are the conqueror. We are the persecuted. They are the persecutor. Now, the problem with that is, generally in, in situations like, like the ones that I've mentioned above, everybody believes themselves to be the victim. Everybody believes themselves to be the, uh, the, the person, who, the, the side who's been hard done by. Everyone believes that they're occupying the moral high ground, although they will admit to committing gross immoralities, but they generally say it's a question of survival. We have to do immoral things. We have to fight dirty because it's us or them. In other words, it's another way of uh, not taking the blame for the situation. Those bad people are forcing us to do things that we would rather not do. We have to do this in order to survive. We have no choice. This horrible conflict has been visited upon us by these other people and they're bringing out the worst in us. If they stopped doing what they were doing, we wouldn't have to do any of this. Now, the problem with that kind of thing is both sides see things this way. It's just that they disagree on whose fault it is. Very rarely in a conflict like this does, does one side say, yes, we are the perpetrators, we are the bad people, we are the ones who started it, and we are the perpetrators, we are the, uh, the oppressors. It's they who are the oppressors, those bad people. Now, provided these sorts of things are, are confined to places like Northern Ireland, Palestine, Bosnia, um, any number of other places, it looks like Iraq may be heading in that general direction. Provided they're localized, they only really, and this is not to belittle them, they, they, so long as they can be contained, it only makes the people locally miserable. Okay, the, the, the Ulster problem is generally confined to the people who live in Northern Ireland. Uh, the Bosnia problem is generally confined to the people who live in Bosnia, etc., etc. The problem is, <coughs> this kind of tendency has uh, shown signs of going global since 9-11. Um, each side now is starting to look at each other and say, you are out to get me. You are cornering me. You are limiting my options in my means of dealing with you because you will strike at me Without any warning, I don't really know where you're going to hit me next, i.e. this that's the Western sense of uh, fear of terrorism, and we all know the, the number of conspiracy theories and uh, that kind of thing that are prevalent in the Islamic world. Um, <clears throat> each side is demonizing each other. I'm not going to say that the West isn't demonizing the Islamic world. Just look at any of these disgusting uh, videos that you see on YouTube all the time vilifying Islam. Okay, like just singling out Islam, vilifying it in the most repulsive, semi-pornographic way. Of course, that sort of thing is happening on this side. But having said that, what do what do you re routinely read in the newspapers of the Islamic world? What do you routinely hear government uh, ministers in Iran saying? Um, <clears throat> this kind of thing. Um, I don't think that the Iranians quite grasped what they were doing in around 1979-1980 when they started to routinely refer to the United States as the Great Satan. That to me was the first religious based one that I'd seen. The United States and the Soviet Union generally vilified each other, uh, but generally it was an ideological thing. Uh, communism is bad, capitalism is bad. But now when you take a country and say it is Satan itself, like the Iranian government w was the first one to do this, in my uh, estimation, and I'm not blaming them for this. I'm not blaming them for having done this. In fact, I don't really think that they understood the severity of what they were doing at the time. Um, they were new at what they were doing. They were revolutionaries, and revolutionaries tend to have a black-white view of the world, and they tend to be full of fire and brimstone. That's fine. But what, what do you suppose the effect of this was on the United States? Well. Until 9-11, they were just inclined to laugh and shrug it off. Okay, these people think that we're Satan. Who cares what they think? Uh, we can take them on. We can defeat them militarily. No problem. They, they hadn't actually been subjected to, uh, to terrorist attack. Although, prior to 9-11, um, they had done some questionable things themselves. The United States, the West, whatever you want to say, vis-a-vis -vis the Islamic world. <coughs> now, since 9-11... 
The West is increasingly picking up on this demonization of the Islamic world. Starting to say there is nothing redeeming about it. It is just a cancer on the world, the Islamic world. Uh, it's an evil ideology bent on crushing us. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's a well, you know, I, I don't even want to repeat what people are saying about it, but generally it's saying Islam now is the problem. They, and, and people believe this. Okay, people believe this. I'm not saying that it's just, uh, it's just uh, hysteria or it's just nasty people. There are actually some fairly thought, thoughtful people out there that really are starting to say Islam is out to get us and it wants to change us into something that we don't want to be. Now, of course, that's precisely the way the Islamic world, or many people in the Islamic world, have viewed the West for a long time. So what do we do here about this situation where each one believes it is a victim at the hands of the other? We can either decide that we're going to step into a Palestine-like situation where people fight each other to a standstill and yet continue to fight year in, year out, after both sides are thoroughly exhausted. Because they have decided, the others, this is a fight to the finish, the other side is out to get me, is out to crush me. I'm cornered, I have no option but to fight back hard. And not only that, the other people are bad. Because after, after, what, after so many people suffer for so long, you really do start to see the other guy as just plain evil. You forget why you're fighting anymore. You've suffered so much at his hands, you kind of conveniently ignore the fact that he has suffered terribly at your hands, or maybe not your hands, but people on your side. Um, and you say, well, this is just a question of survival, because when you're dealing with people like that, you have to be harsh. Do we really want to go down that road, the, uh, the Islamic world and the Western world? Do we really want uh, the West to be characterized as the great Satan? Do we really want uh, Western culture portrayed the way that it often is in the Islamic world? Do we as Westerners really want uh, Islam and the Islamic world to be portrayed the way it often is in our part of the world? Do we really want this? Are the, are, 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 is the Islamic world really as bad as we believe it is? or? Why is it suddenly, now we're seeing it this way? Because 9-11 scared us all to death. We say now this is actually a threat to us. This is not just a bunch of pipsqueaks in the third world um, calling us names. So, what do we do about this? We speak out against people who are actually vilifying the other guy. Don't try and pretend like we're, that, that we're, we're in love with each other. We're, in many ways, the Islamic world and the Western world are miles apart. But... I have to go on record and say I don't like what uh, people like Pat Condell say about the Islamic world, although to be fair to Pat Condell, he attacks every religion equally. I don't like people like Hert Wilders in the Netherlands, who actually comes out and says, well, Islam is a retarded religion. Well, <laughs> what do you expect a Muslim to think when you say that about him? It's the same thing as saying that uh, uh, the West is the great Satan. Okay, well, there's nothing good about me at all, uh, therefore, um, what's the point of trying to negotiate? We have to avoid this kind of thing. We have to avoid this kind of situation if we really want to have a world that we all want to live in. So, I invite anyone who actually wants to work this sort of thing out, who actually isn't interested in scapegoating and finding out whose fault all of this is, uh, to examine one's own role in creating this situation. It's all very well to say I'm doing whatever I'm doing out of self-defense, or I've had enough, or I'm fed up, or whatever, but Right now, the world is a pretty good place to live in. If we keep going the way that we're going, or if things go the way they might go, um, we may regret the choices that we're all making right now. Thank you.